Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm jumping into Color Transfer, which is the new creative tool that's coming out in the fall upgrade to Luminar Neo. We're gonna dive in, edit a photo, I'm gonna walk through the different sliders, show you how they work, what they mean. Let's go ahead and get into it. I have a photo here, this is something I shot in Vegas years ago. It was pre-sunrise, it was pretty nice light. I did make some basic adjustments with develop and super contrast, so before, and current state, right? Before and current state. And what I wanna do is transfer colors from a different photo onto this one. Now in this case, I'm gonna make it look a little bit more intense color-wise, more of a sunset-y kind of twilight photo. And yes, there are other tools, including Twilight Enhancer, that you could do that. But this tool allows you to actually take the specific colors in a reference image and add them to the photo that you're editing. In this case, this photo. Color transfer, it's in creative, you just click and of course, you've got the reference selection. That's where it all begins. That is your reference image. That is the color you, uh, excuse me, the image you wanna take the colors from before you add them to the image that you're working on. You can load your own. There's a few that come in Luminar. There's, uh, let's see, five that came in Luminar. I've been experimenting with a few different ones of my own. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one here, which is something I edited previously, uh, actually in a previous video using Twilight Enhancer, and I created a pretty intense colorful twilight look on this photo from Amsterdam. And now it's gonna take a minute. You'll see down here, the engine is kind of chugging along and it will apply those color tones across this image. And there you go, it's been applied. Now it's taken those colors and stuck them on this photo. But of course I wanna refine it. I don't want it to be exactly like that. And that's what all these sliders do for you. So amount of course, pretty self-explanatory. That is how much of this color transfer do you want to come over? It defaults to 60 and I moved it up to 100, you can see it was quite a bit more. I might take it down to 50 or something. Um, I just experiment, and in fairness, every single image is gonna be different, and the desire that you have to customize that image is gonna be different than the way I do it, for example. The point is, all these sliders give you that uh, capability to move things around, shift colors and tones, and that's what we're gonna be covering here. So color intensity is essentially the saturation level of the colors that came over. So they're at 100 and I'm gonna just drop these to let's say 50 and all I'm doing, as you can see, it's already made that adjustment. It's pulling back on how intense or how saturated the colors that came over are. So before and after, it's a little bit darker photo because guess what? The reference image was darker than this one. But also I've got luminosity intensity and it's at 100. And that increases or decreases the amount of luminance or the brightness value from the reference image as it's applied to this one. So at 100, you're getting all of that. In this case, I'm going to drop that to 50, and you will see that the image lightened up, hey, by 50%. Uh, it's essentially taken the luminosity from the reference image and cut it in half because I went from 100, which was all of it, to 50, which was half of it. So again, before and after giving me a little bit uh, softer implementation of that color look in this photo and I've adjusted the color intensity and the luminosity intensity so far. Now transition smoothing basically softens the transition between the different color zones that have come over from your reference photo. So you're getting a reasonably smooth uh, transition at 50. At 100 you're getting all of the smoothing if you will. And so what you'll see is this slightly adjust. You may have just seen that in the sky kind of smooths it out. Whereas if I drop it down to zero, you're gonna get a little bit more abrupt change. Again, most noticeable in the clouds, but if you look at them, there they are at zero. And of course, there they are at 100. So I think I'll leave it at 50, but again, it's worth experimenting with and season to taste, as I always like to say. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and go with 50, which was the default here, but it's just smoothing the transition between the different color zones uh, based on the colors that came over from your reference image. Now color smoothing balances the variances of color across this image. So this helps to create a little bit smoother overall look as well. And again, this is one of those where you just experiment and season to taste based on how you want the photo to look. I don't really see a huge difference there. Let me go down to zero and try it the other way. Most noticeably, uh, most noticeable, I should say, in the clouds. There it is at zero. If you look at those clouds kind of between these two buildings and at 100, there you go. That looks like a little bit smoother transition, a little bit smoother overall look. And so I just recommend, again, experimenting, kind of playing around, see which ones of these work for you in each particular image. And it's not only gonna vary based on the image that you're editing, but also, of course, on what's coming over from the reference image. 
So match similar objects colors, as the name implies, is gonna do that. It's using AI to figure things out. And if you have, let's say, a vehicle in your reference image and a vehicle in your current editing image, it's gonna match those similar elements in terms of style and color. Because I'm running beta, I'm finding that this tool is pretty slow overall, and I'm not seeing a big shift when I do that. So I'll keep playing with it, but I'm sure it'll be sorted out before October 10 release date. It also could just be that the image I'm using uh, so far haven't really had enough uh, similar references because I believe that the more similar the objects are, the more accurate you're going to see in that uh, reference and that transfer, if you will. But if you look at the before and the after, you can see I've added a nice kind of subtle color shift to this photo. And maybe I'll bring it up a little bit more because I reduced the color intensity, the saturation and the luminosity intensity, which was kind of the darkened version of the reference image. But because I lessen that, it's a little bit lighter, but I feel like I've got a nice uh, overall look from the before to the after or current state. Now, having said that, this is where I would go in and add additional edits. For example, it needs a little bit more contrast, a little bit more pop in some of the light. And for me, the quickest, easiest way to do that is Accent AI. So I'll just come over here, I'll go to like 40 and just give that a little bit of a bump there. That helps quite a bit. And I will also maybe go into something like landscape and get a little golden hour. Give that a little bump in the warmth. I like those warm sunrise colors. And maybe I'll even go into toning and hit the highlights with a little bit of red. And there you go. So those edits were quick and simple and straightforward. But if you look at the before and the after, a couple of quick edits after doing color transfer, but with color transfer really set me in the direction of getting this image to look the way that I wanted it to look. So again, before and after. Now, there's plenty of other things that I would do when editing an image, lots of masking and things like that. I'm not getting in, into that in this video, just doing a quick demonstration of color transfer, show you what it looks like, walk through the sliders, and give you an idea of what you can do to an image and how quickly it works in terms of giving you that look and feel from your reference image to your edited image. I think overall this feature is going to be really popular because there's so many times, especially uh, years ago, when I was looking at images and I was like, gosh, I just wish I could get my colors to kind of look like that. Well, now, instead of having to experiment with HSL and color balance and shifting things around and curves and all these kind of things, now you just take a screenshot of that reference image, plug it in here to color transfer, and just let the magic happen. It's beautiful, it's simple, it's powerful, and I actually think it's a great training tool as well as you learn how to manage and kind of manipulate things in the edits to achieve whatever creative vision you may have for your own photos. That's how this one goes, my friends. Thanks for watching. Hope it gives you some ideas. And thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another Luminar Neil video. You guys take care. And until next time, adios.